Hello to everybody who is joining. I'm just going to wait a few more seconds just to give people the chance to tune in on Facebook and on the Zoom, and then we're going to get started. So hello. Okay, so I think now is a great time to start with the introductions. Um, welcome everybody to Africa Fashion Week London's Masterclass series. Today is the final Masterclass in this series. If you've been following uh, Africa Fashion Week for the past uh, month, for the month of June uh, into July, you would have seen uh, loads of interesting things happening, loads of interesting talks, panel discussions from people in the creative industry, uh, designers, people in fashion tech. And so it's been a really, really um, interesting series. I moderated, I think, about four talks and they've been so insightful, you know, so much knowledge was shared. And so for today, for the final talk, we have an extra, extra, extra special guest who, well, a guest, but also technically not a guest because this is her home. This is, you know, this is her brainchild. She founded this. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her for those who don't know. And then I'm going to hand over to her to, uh, to talk to you a bit about her career and what she's done. So uh, please welcome Princess Ronke Ademi Luyi. She is the founder of Africa Fashion Week London and Africa Fashion Week Nigeria. She was born in London to a scion of the Nigerian royal family. She is the great granddaughter of the late Oni Ajagun Ademiluyi, the king of the Ife Kingdom in southwest Nigeria. She is a graduate of law from Thames Valley University in London, and Princess Ronke founded Africa Fashion Week London in 2011. She was fueled by the lack of retail space production factories and startup funds, and how it was hindering the growth of the potential billion dollar African fashion industry. She is on a continuous mission to bring African fashion to the forefront of the global fashion world. AFWL has now acquired global recognition and has become a platform where almost 1,000 African and African-inspired designers have shown their collections in London. So welcome to AFWL's Masterclass, Princess Ronke. Thank you very much, um, Eniafe. Um, so it's, this is the second time I'm seeing you this week. <laughs> yeah, so we did a little teaser yesterday on Instagram Live, um, just to kind of introduce people to the topic of conversation, and you shared a little bit about your journey there. So today's, you know, we're ready for the main event. Um, so today you're going to be speaking to us about what led you to start Africa Fashion Week London, the journey so far, how you were able to turn that idea into a reality. Um, you're going to tell us, I think, a bit about the challenges that you faced, as well as your successes and your milestones. And then I think towards the end, you'll talk a little bit about, you know, your plans for the future and your advice for young creatives who are wanting to set up something similar. So just before I hand over to you, I want to just ask you, obviously, you know, we've been in, in lockdown, most of us, and we've been dealing with the whole you know, coronavirus pandemic. How have the past few months been for you? And how have you sort of spent that time? Um, past few months, so I came into London in March um, and then I got um, stuck in London, you know, and I've been here since um, relaxing, um, adapting to change, moving a lot of our activities from offline to online and also spending time with my daughter. Mm. So that's what I've been doing so far and also you've taken up some writing lessons as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so loads of people have uh, taken the opportunity to, to learn something new, what to learn a new skill. I took up design, actually. That was something that I hadn't done before. So I've started doing some like uh, graphic design and things like that. So um, without further ado, I'm, I'm going to hand over to you to deliver your session and then I will come back later for the Q&A at the end. So just to everybody who's watching live uh, on the Zoom and on Facebook, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat as the talk goes on and then I'll 
calculate them from my end and then kind of bring them back at the end. So um, don't feel like you have to wait. You can start leaving your questions for her as they come to mind and we'll pass them on to her during the Q&A at the end. So thank you everybody and enjoy the rest of the talk. Bye. Thank you very much, Enya Fair. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for joining in to listen to my masterclass. Um, as you all know, I'm Princess Ronke, the founder of Africa Fashion Week London and Africa Fashion Week Nigeria, a platform that um, promotes and creates awareness for African designers so they can sustain themselves. Fashion is not actually my background, so I graduated as a lawyer, but I had always wanted to go into the business of fashion. So my study in law was just to get a qualification as fashion was not seen as a lucrative profession back then. So immediately after studying law, I moved straight into the fashion industry. I moved to Nigeria um, and I set up um, my uh, about four retail stalls called Rookies, um, had those for a couple of years. And this was what led me to starting up Africa Fashion Week London in 2010. So the preparation started in 2010, but the idea actually came into a reality in 2011. So um, I remember while I was growing up in London in the 90s, and I, I must have said this so many times, that it was so difficult to lay your hands on a ready-to-wear African outfit. So um, you would have to send a message back home. I used to do that often in Nigeria because I was all, always in love with African prints and African outfits. So I would send a message back home to someone in Nigeria and I would have to wait for them you know, to come to London or look for someone coming to London to bring me that outfit. And then I thought to myself, there must be some African designers in the UK but nobody knows where they are. There wasn't a platform, you know, that brought them together. So there was this lack. And I, I thought, OK, you know what? I think I should fill in this gap. So Africa Fashion Week London was born out of like a moral obligation and an urgent need for a platform that showcased African designers. Because for creativity to grow, there needs to be a platform that supports and promotes its growth. And that was how the idea of Africa Fashion Week London came about. So in 2010, um, I put um, a proposal together. I shared my idea with a few people, but um, I didn't get a good response. People said, um, who would buy Africa fashion in London? I was even advised to change the name. People said, oh, it's just um, a thing that would go and come, that nobody's really interested in Africa fashion. But I thought to myself, you know what? I, I didn't doubt myself for once. I said, you know what, I'm going to try it. If it works, fine. And if it doesn't work, I'll move on to something else. Something else. So I started putting my action plan together. Um, I got um, a proposal together, which I sent out to seek and for funding support. Um, I looked for a venue. Um, I got a production manager, looked for models, um, a makeup team, a hair team, a hairstylist. Um, I got, um, I, that was at the point that I actually learned how to go, because prior to that time, I had no knowledge of um, Facebook or um, Instagram or Twitter. So I had to learn as well how to like um, go on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, you know, so to reach out to people, especially media outlets, so they could support my idea. So this went on from, um, I think, uh, it went on from 2010 up to 2011. And then three months into the event, I realized that um, I didn't have any funds to do the event because most of the proposals I had sent out had come back with a no, and no one was willing to support the idea because they did not think that it was a good idea. So I had to empty out all my savings. I went to my brother, my older brother, who's my co-founder, and he also um, emptied his savings as well. And in 2011, yeah, in August 2011, if I remember well, we had the first Africa Fashion Week London um, at the Gibson Hall at Bishop's Gate in the city of London. Um, we were able to showcase about um, 60 designers to an audience of almost 4,500 visitors, showing the vibrant colors of the designers, you know, the designs, the innovative designs of the young designers, talented designers, and after the show, I remember what everyone kept saying, and it was, why hadn't this been done before? Why had nobody showcased Africa in London before? So 
thank goodness that I didn't listen to the advice of people who said, you know what, this would never work in London. It wasn't a good idea. So I went ahead and done it and it was, it was a huge success. And um, from off the back of Africa Fashion Week London 2011, a lot of fashion weeks, um, a lot of Africa fashion weeks have now grown around the world because from the success of our event, it influenced um, the growth of um, a lot of fashion weeks, a lot of Africa fashion weeks in major cities around the world. I remember when we had our 2012 event during the Olympics, it was a huge turnout and loads of uh, different communities because everyone converged in London then to come and watch the Olympics. So we had different communities, different countries come and experience um, what Africa fashion was all about. So Africa fashion has given um, Africa Fashion Week London has been able to create opportunities, you know, for young talented designers. Um, it's been able to like bridge the gap between um, the African designers and their target audience. Um, over the years, I must say we've showcased um, about 1,000 designers to an audience of about 70,000 visitors. You know, we've worked with fashion councils from almost every country in Africa, giving them exposure in one of the main fashion capitals of the world. Not to say that it wasn't challenging, it wasn't an easy ride. Um, I remember initially when I started, you know, getting a team that whose goals aligned with mine was really difficult. The brand was attracting a lot of people who just saw the glitz and glamorous side of the fashion week. They didn't see the actual um, 10 months of hard work that needed to be put in to ensure that we had a successful two or three days of the show itself. So I had to keep on changing my team and that was really, really difficult. So I would have one team. So one year I would have one team and then the next year um, I would have another team. So I had to like look for people whose goals aligned with mine and who were ready to do more of work and less of show. Right now I have an amazing team um, from my um, head of press, Anna Marie, to Buki who heads our operations, um, Kamari who's my co-founder, and Michael who's our um, sponsorship and partnership manager. But prior to that, the brand was attracting the wrong people. But my team now, they do more of work and less of show, and they do full-time work for part-time pay. That's what I say all the time. So yes, that's how I was able to like um, deal with that challenge. Another challenge that I faced was, you know, I got so um, I got so caught up in the passion side of the fashion because, like I said, while I was growing up, I had always been interested in the business of fashion. So I got so caught up in that that I wasn't able to identify the revenue streams that could come out of the platform. So I ended up having to sell my flat in London at some point to sustain the brand. So that was a, that's one of the challenges um, that I faced. So um, I would say if you're going into a business um, or you want to start um, and you have an idea that you want to start, you have to always make sure that you're not just driven by passion. You have to make sure that you're able to identify you know, what revenue streams are available so you can become sustainable. Because for me, after a while, Africa Fashion Week London wasn't sustainable. That was why I had to sell my flat. But now I've um, been able to identify, you know, various revenue streams that can keep the brand going on and on and on. Um, the growth of Africa Fashion Week has been amazing and the success we're the ones, we're the only ones who do what we do in the, in the UK. Um, we've been around um, for 10 years now. Yes, we were going to celebrate our 10th anniversary this year, but due to COVID, um, we've moved both, most of our, most of our um, activities have been moved from um, online to offline at the moment. So um, what else can I say about um, Africa Fashion Week? It's an amazing platform. It's, um, it's a good platform that designers use. We've had 10 years of consistency. We support African and BAME designers. We work a lot with um, students who use that opportunity to showcase their works and their talents at Africa Fashion Week. We work with fashion councils all over Africa who want to use our platform um, to showcase their young creatives in the UK. And we work with universities and colleges as well. And we've also established a sister brand in Nigeria called Africa Fashion Week Nigeria. 
to give equally talented designers um, the means, you know, the support to showcase themselves um, because, um, because they can't afford to come to London to showcase at Africa Fashion Week London. So um, that's my story about um, Africa Fashion Week and London. Um, a little bit of advice that I can give young people or whoever wants to um, venture into um, creating a brand and making a success out of it. Um, so, and these will be some of the lessons that I have learned. When you start with an idea, even if someone else has a similar idea, it indicates that your vibration is high. So don't be put off, just go ahead and do what you have to do. Um, also identify the problems that your idea can solve. With Africa Fashion Week London, we knew that there was a gap in the industry and the designers needed a platform. The African and the BAME designers needed a platform that could enable them to showcase their creativity and talent. And we were, with that, I was able to identify the problem that Africa Fashion Week could solve. And you also have to um, have clarity on what your clients want. With Africa Fashion Week, uh, Africa Fashion Week London, um, we knew that the designers needed a platform. We were very, very clear because we did a bit of a survey as well. When I started, I was able to talk to designers before um, the event in 2011, and I was sure that that platform was needed. It's also important to put an action plan together. So after, after I conceived the idea of having an Africa Fashion Week in London, I was able to put an action plan together, the type of venue I wanted, I reached out to designers, I reached out to various media houses, you know, I reached out to um, a production company, a technical production company, a styling team, a hair team, a makeup team. So I was able to put that action plan together and that really helped. Um, it's also, um, it's really, really important that you work with your, with your gut feeling. So if you know that this idea is going to work, don't be discouraged, just go ahead with it. You might also have so many dreams for your idea, but be clear where you want to go. So you must be able to identify your short term and your long term goals. That's very, very important that you don't get carried away. With Africa Fashion Week London, I knew that at some point um, we were going to go into providing solutions for the various challenges that African um, designers and the African fashion industry was facing. I knew that we wanted to go into um, education which is what we're doing now with um, Henley's um, Business School and Parsons Design School New York. But when I started, I made sure that I started with showcasing um, African designers. That's what I started with. So I didn't get carried away with so many things. You know, I didn't get um, carried away with, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that. So you have to make sure that your goals are not just inspirational, but they're attainable as well. You must be able to make sure that you can attain whatever you want to do. And I was able to do that with Africa Fashion Week. You must also identify your revenue stream. That is important so that you can become sustainable to yourself and so that your brand can become sustainable. It's important. Like I mentioned earlier on, I got so carried away with passion because sometimes when passion kicks in, we fail to see the business side of things. And that was what happened to me. I got so carried away with passion that I wasn't able um, to identify the various revenue streams that Africa Fashion Week London had. And it wasn't until I sold my flat you know, to sustain the brand that I had to like, you know, take a step back and rethink and start looking at, you know, the revenue side of things. So I was able to do that as well. It's also important that you tap into your connections. You know, connections are very important. I remember when I um, started, when we decided to branch out and start an um, Africa Fashion Week Nigeria, I reached out to so many people and um, any affairs dad was very, very helpful, you know, in connecting me with people, you know, having meetings with me, directing me on where to go. So he was very, very important, you know, in establishing Africa Fashion Week Nigeria. Collaborations as well is another, is another thing that um, I was able to do because there's this saying, um, there's this African saying that when you go fast, you go alone. But when you, when you want to go far, you go with people. And what um, collaborations, what, what it, if you collaborate, what it would help you do is, you know, it would um, 
uh, it would expand in your horizons. It would um, allow you to um, have a wider reach. And that is what we have done um, with Africa Fashion Week London. We have so many partnerships and collaborations for, um, our for the education part. And um, at the moment we've collaborated um, with Henley's Business School UK and Parsons Design School New York, you know, to deliver our online course. We've also um, partnered, we were partners with the British Council. We are um, partners with um, the Mayor of London's um, Africa in London initiative. We're part of their advisory board. So um, that's my advice for you. The future for Africa Fashion Week London. We all know that um, the situation of, of COVID um, has um, allowed um, a lot of organizations, if not all organizations, you know, and even individuals as well, you know, to take a step back and to see how they can adapt to change. And what we have done is we've moved all of our, all of our activities from offline to online. So we are now going digital with most of our things. Um, we started with our webinars, which was a huge success. Our masterclasses as well, thanks to um, our speakers, was really, really on point. Our online courses, um, which started on the 29th of June and is still running, you know, until the, I think the 6th of July, and which will have another one after that is ongoing. And we're in the process of building um, a virtual platform so um, our designers can continue to do what they do best and even continue to sustain themselves um, in this difficult time of COVID. So that's my, that's my story on Africa Fashion Week London. Um, any affair, I'm going to hand back to, over back to you now, see if you have any questions. Any affair, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Okay. Um, so thank you so much for telling your story and telling us about your journey. I was listening back. Like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. Like, it was really, really interesting. Um, one thing that I noted down was how you said uh, that when you started, people were, you know, saying, well, who would buy African fashion anyway? You know, who cares about this? You know, change your name to something, you know, something people can get behind. I think it's, it's interesting, you know, kind of getting some insight into what goes on behind the scenes and the things that we don't see. Because what, what we're used to seeing is sort of the success. Like you mentioned it, we see the glamour side, we see that, you know, we see the, the attendees and people having fun, but we're not used to hearing about what it actually takes to build something like this and put something like this together. Together. the financial you know struggles the the, the hardships the, the the effort the dedication that it takes so um so thank you so much for for sharing um as you did so the questions have started rolling in don't forget if you have any questions you can drop them in the chat or in the q a but i think i have two or three here already um so I think this is from the Facebook. What is the most important thing that you are working on right now and how are you making it happen? Um, the most important thing we're working on right now is moving our activities from online, sorry, from offline to online. And we have started, and like I mentioned earlier, with our webinars, our masterclasses, our online courses. And we are also in the process of building um, a digital platform so that we can continue to support designers in this difficult time of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question from Jagisha Ashani, who wants to know, what kept you motivated in your tough times? I think I was driven by passion. And like I said, I had always wanted to go into the business of fashion. So my study in law was just to get a qualification. So once you're driven by passion, you just keep going, you keep knocking on doors, even if they get closed in your faces, you keep on going on and on until you're able to achieve what you want to achieve. And that was um, what I was able to do. You go with your gut feeling, you work with your brain and your heart as well. Um, and also, how do you, or how, how can one register themselves for the fashion show from India? Is that possible? How can people in other countries get involved? Um, Africa Fashion Week in London is a is an, it's an inclusive platform. So um, we work with um, designers, you know, from all over the world who are inspired by Africa. So the registration is on our website and we have a link on the website. Our website is www.africafashionweeklondonuk.com. Uh, what is the hardest decision that you've had to make so far? The hardest decision for me was selling my flat. 
it was either I sold the flat and put the funds into Africa Fashion Week London to keep it going. I stopped the event entirely and I wasn't, I, I, I didn't want to do that because like I said, I think it, I keep saying it was like a moral obligation that I felt, you know, that was needed. So if selling my flat was going to make it happen, was going to keep it going, I, I was more than happy to do that. So yeah, that was one of the most difficult um, decisions that I had to make, but no regret. How can I ask how like how far into so you started in 2011? So how long after that was that when you had to make that decision to sell your flat? I think it was about four years after, four years after doing the Africa Fashion Week and not making any money and not mm. you know, not being able to get support funding, but just you know keep you know you just like I said you just keep on going and going and going. Mm. But sometimes it's not advisable to always be driven by passion you must be able to identify your revenue streams. And I did not do that from the BM at the beginning of um, establishing Africa Fashion Week London. Um, so what is your vision now for Africa Fashion Week London slash Nigeria? Um, my vision is um, for us to continue to support the designers that we support. My vision is for us to be able to um, help them you know become sustainable brands to be able to identify a manufacturing hubs that can you know take small orders from the designers to be able to identify um and link them with um textile making industries that can you know um take small orders off them as well because at the moment nothing really um not, not, nothing caters for, for that audience where they, they, they want to make small orders. I remember I had, um, um, I think it was in 2015 or 16, a brand, um, uh, one of our brands called Victoria Grace, and she showcased that Africa Fashion Week London in the Olympia. And um, I think um, Anthropology, if I remember, came and they wanted to place orders, massive orders from her. I think they wanted a thousand pieces from each piece that she should take in the one way, but she didn't have the ability to do that. She didn't have the, the support, the financial support or financial backing to be able to do that. And because of that, um, she lost out on that, um, that order, that opportunity. So, you know, being able to identify the challenges that our designers face and also, you know, providing solutions for them as well. And especially the young graduates in London here as well, when they graduate, so that the, the young fashion graduates you know, identifying opportunities for them so they can actually, you know, focus on that fashion career that they, um, that, you know, that they studied rather than diversifying and going into different um, things because they're not making money. So that's one of them. Um, that's our main, one of our main visions at African Fashion Week London. Um, that actually leads us quite nicely into the next question, which is for people who have just graduated, how do you suggest we take our career path? For people who have just graduated, um, we are we, we're working on um, we're working on on a what do I call it? We're working on something where we want to work with them, um, young graduates, you know, to be able to like um, take them on a long career path, a, path, a long career path, so they don't diversify into something else. We know we've worked with a few students and um, from universities here in London, a few BAME students. We've showcased them at Africa Fashion Week London. But right now we're working with some universities, you know, to be able to identify the challenges that the students have after graduating, that the fashion students have, that can take them into like a full career path in fashion. So it's something we're working on, on at the moment. We, we haven't quite identified it yet, but we are on the path to being able to identify that and, you know, provide a solution to that. Um, so I really like this next question. What does culture mean to you and how do you ensure that this culture is maintained with everyone at AFWL? Um, okay, so at AFWL, we promote um, the, the culture of the, the fashion, you know, the, the, the fashion side of the culture, of the African culture. So we have, we know that Africa is a continent, you know, with um, about 54 different countries. We ensure that and most of the countries are represented at Africa Fashion Week. So we've worked with designers from South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Botswana, um, 
Congo, um, Tanzania, um, uh, Seychelles. So we've worked with loads of designers. And when they come to Africa Fashion Week, they bring their culture with them. So it's kind of like a mixture of different cultures from the African continent and also the African diaspora as well. Not forgetting, you know, it's like a cultural exchange program because the designers from the continent are able to like, you know, mix with the designers who are in the African diaspora and they exchange um, designs. Some of them have collaborated, they work together. So for me, culture is like, it's a very important aspect of the African fashion, with promoting our culture, but through fashion. Uh, I, th I think there's a lot of truth to that, actually, because I was at um, I was at Africa Fashion Week London for the first time in 2019, and I remember that a lot of the people I met there were people who, you know, they're they're, they're Nigerian or Ghanaian or the, you know from one African country or the other, but who maybe have never really been there or have never really experienced that side of their culture, and so AFWL was, you know, for them was really a place where. For, in some cases for the first time or for the first time in a long time they were really able to experience you know their culture in in, in an innovative way you know through fashion experiencing the food um so so is there you know to you like a kind of uh, i don't know if benefit is the word or something is it something you kind of appreciate the value that this has to people in the diaspora who are kind of looking to connect with their with their roots and with their heritage a bit more um given that there are so few opportunities for them to do that um i think it just i just get fulfilled anytime i anytime we have an africa fashion week and we see the you know the, the number of attendees that take you know they take the time to come and experience the african culture like you said it's not just about the fashion we have the food the music as well so it's a whole you know it, it it's a whole gathering of African culture. And then um, for me, when, when, when people come, and when I see the huge number of people, they come from different parts of the world. They come from different parts of the UK, um, Europe, you know, outside London, in London, we've got, we have, we know we have visitors from Europe, from the US as well, who come to experience African culture and also the fashion as well, because they know that the fashion that they see at Africa Fashion Week is not available on the high street. Very true. So um, the next question, how do you build and develop talent and elevate people to be at their very best? Um, like I mentioned earlier, Africa Fashion Week is an inclusive platform. Over the years, um, I think we must have worked with about 400 BAME models. You know, for, um, most of them, it's always their first time of, you know, um, being on the catwalk. So we do our model casting, we encourage them, and that's one way that we use um, the Africa Fashion Week in London to promote, promote young creative talent. Um, it's open to everyone. You don't have to be African to be able to like um, be on um, the catwalk and yeah, be a model for us at Africa Fashion Week London. So that's way, one way we promote creative talents. We also work with, a, with young volunteers as well um, within the creative industry during the Fashion Week. Um, I think sometimes we have up to about a hundred um, young volunteers who are interested in the fashion industry that we work with as well. So uh, what have you learned about yourself during your entre entrepreneurial journey, if anything? Well, I've learned to, <laughs> what have I learned? Um, I've learned to work with people I, because it has exposed me to so many people from different cultures, different backgrounds. So it, it has taught me to be patient. It has taught me how to work with people. It has taught me to appreciate people as well. You know, and it's, um, and it's an ongoing thing. I'm still learning. You know, I, I'm, we're not at the, our peak yet. Yes, we're 10 years, but um, we're, still, we're still learning so much. You know, there's still so much we can do. There's still many um, challenges that our designers face that we need to provide solutions for. So I'm still learning. It's a learning curve for me, but I, I enjoy it. Is there anything that you would do differently now that maybe you did earlier on that, that if you could kind of go back and retroactively change it? You I wouldn't have sold my flat if I had the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, maybe I would have um, identified um, the revenue streams of, you know, the, the, the potential revenue streams of Africa Fashion Week, you know, at the beginning, 
maybe I wouldn't have gotten carried away in the passion in the passion side of the of Africa Fashion Week. So yeah, that's one thing I would have done differently. But aside from that, I'm I'm content and I appreciate um, you know everyone, including yourself. And I mentioned your dad as well when I was um, going to start Africa Fashion Week Nigeria. You know that the support that he put behind um, me and the brand. He calls me his abro, and I call him my egg boss. So. Um, <laughs> Um, so I have a question from Abby Kazim. What do your days typically look like during the lead up to AFW London and Nigeria? Oh, wow. Manic. <laughs> I'm sure you've been a part of it, any affair. It's manic, but it's, I call it organized chaos. So it's <laughs> chaotic, but it's very organized. So we're not pulling out each other's hairs or beating each other up, no, but it is so stressful. But I think um, we, we've managed that over the years, so we kind of know what to expect. So we have a Bible for Africa Fashion Week. We know what to do at what time. So, um, yes. So I have a question from Double Nine Radio. There are a lot of amazing fashion designers in Nigeria and in Africa, but they seem to lack opportunities to showcase their work. So how does AFWL plan to help those undiscovered talents? Um, we started with the Africa Fashion Week Nigeria, which was a platform that was um, created for um, talented designers, but don't have the, um, the means to travel to London for the Africa Fashion Week London. We intend to go on a road show at some point. We were planning that this year before the outbreak of COVID. So the plan was to do a road show across Africa and identify you know um talents you know every year and see how we could you know support them in creating awareness and you know maybe um showcasing them at africa fashion week london as well with the support of our uh, our sponsors so that was one thing where so it's still in the pipeline we haven't um, put it off yet but due to covid we've had to move to um uh, online at the moment so i have a question from winnie mills she wants to know um, she says, Anifa's virtual fashion show, I don't know if you saw that, but um, it's, uh, I, I saw that was really, really interesting. She says, Anifa's virtual fashion show was groundbreaking. Do you have something similar in the pipeline? I think I know the answer. <laughs> yes, we do. Like I mentioned earlier, we're in the process of building our virtual um, platform. So designers from across the world do not need to travel. They would not need to travel to London anymore to showcase at Africa Fashion Week London. But we're in the process of building it and we hope to launch it soon, fingers crossed. Um, do you encourage colleges approaching you from overseas? Oh, um, yes, we do. Um, uh, we worked with um, universities in London here um, and we are definitely open to working with colleges and universities in Africa and overseas as well, wherever they are. Yes, we are. Um, our, our aim is to use um, uh, the Africa Fashion Week platform to, to promote, um, to, to influence um, a lot of fashion around the world as much as we can. So we're open to collaborations, you know, all the way. Um, so I have a question here about the Black Lives Matter movement and more specifically um, how AFWL is uh, supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. But I want to kind of just expand that to also, do you have any thoughts yourself about, um, you know, the things that we've seen happening in the past few weeks and the conversations around, you know, Black people um, in, you know, in other parts of the world? Um, what we're doing, um, so let me start by telling you what we're doing um, for with Africa Fashion Week London. We are using our platform, you know, to showcase black excellence in London. We're using to, the platform and not just within the creative industry, but across the whole, um, um, uh, it could be businesses, creatives, whatever you're doing. We're using it to showcase um, black talents and we're using it to tell stories about successful black organizations and black brands. So, and we're all, yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're also, um, we're also diving into the archives as well to be able to identify the older generation of um, black excellence that no one seems to be talking about. You know, the seamstresses, the, the tailors who, who, who've worked in Savile Row before, we don't know where they are. So we're trying to dig them up to see where they are so they can be an inspiration to the younger generation. 
So that's one thing we're, we're doing at the moment. We're trying to discover and showcase black excellence around the UK. So I have a question <clears throat> from Tenny Ade Macaulay. How do you help new designers to meet up with producers that will take small orders? And can you explain the process a little bit? Okay, um, one of the master classes we had was with um, uh, Abisade, who owns a production hub in Nigeria. So um, what we do is we, we link designers with um, production hubs that can take small orders. And um, I think I mentioned it earlier on that one of the challenges that some of our designers face is not being able to keep up with the big orders because they don't have the financial backing. So we, we, we started to work with production and manufacturing hubs that can take small orders from designers, you know, so that at least the designers can sustain themselves, sus sustain their brands when they have orders to produce. So that's one thing we're doing at the moment as well. So if there are any designers out there who want to, you know, who have small orders and are not able to identify production factories that can make them, we do have a couple within our network that we can um, connect them with. What was the amount that you initially required to start your dream? <laughs> uh, what was the amount? Um, or if you can't, if you if you can't say the exact number, I how how I'm big was the how big was the difference between the amount that you wanted and then what you ended up having to work with? Was there a big disparity there? No, because the amount that I wanted, I ensured that I got it. So, like I said, I had to empty my savings. I, and and the, I, the first Africa Fashion Week London, I wanted to do it. Um, I, I wanted it to be like of a certain standard. So I was willing to put everything into it. Um, the, the venue, the fir our first venue that we had was at Bishopsgate um, in the city of London. Our second venue was um, uh, Spitterfields. Um, our third venue, we were at the Old Truman Bury, and then we moved to the Olympia. So we've always made sure that we've had like um, um, uh, prestigious venues, you know, because that really, really impacts um, on, on the type of audience and the people who attend Africa Fashion Week as well. So uh, what, what we started with and what we are, where we are now, is all, it's, it's, the, it's not too different. The, the, the figures are not too different. <laughs> that's good to hear it's good and because it's true like if you when you have your vision and you want it to be of a certain standard like there's you you almost won't be willing to accept less than that like i feel like you're probably the type of person who you would rather not do it or you'd rather wait till next year or something like that until you can fulfill the vision uh you know perfectly so um if there are any more questions please do drop them now if not this might be the last one uh, before we let you all go i have a question from uh, andrea rose clark who wants to know as a creative, I struggle writing a proposal so that I can attract supporters. What do backers need to see beyond just the passion of your vision? They, I think they need to see that um, your idea is, it can be sustainable. You can sustain that idea. And that's why it, it, it's very important to identify the revenue streams because a backer doesn't want to back um, an initiative or a project that's only going to be around for one or two years. So you have to be able to define, you know, your revenue streams in your proposal. That's very, very important. Even if you haven't started making um, any revenue, you must be able to identify them. Amazing. So I think that is uh, the end of the q and don't think I've, oh, no, we have one more last minute question. Um, do you recommend any literature or documentaries? Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Not off the top of my head. And like I said, I just, um, I'm starting to learn about the history. I'm starting to learn about how to write, you know, so off the top of my head, nothing at the moment. But I'm starting to learn about the history of African fashion from the head wraps, you know, to the Victorian dresses that our, an, uh, that, that our ancestors used to wear as well. And um, I know that um, Africa, Afri the African continent has 3,000 tribes and each tribe has its own um, 
uh, culture of fashion. So that's something I, I'm learning at the moment. Um, and then I have a question from Double Nine Radio. They say, it would be a pleasure to have Princess spare a few minutes to a live audience on our platform. How could we make this happen? Um, okay, they can contact um, Anna Marie, who deals with all our um, press partnerships. And um, I think her email is press at Africa Fashion Week, LondonUK.com. So if they send her an email, she would respond and let them know my diary if I'm available. She handles all our, you know, PR and press. And she's our head of press. She does an amazing job. She doesn't only do that. She does a lot more than that as well. <laughs> Um, I'm not and I, driver. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have one final question, and I guess another one is going to come in. Um, what top tips can you give for an uh, aspiring entrepreneur, other than the ones you've already said? Um, what top tips? Um, start with an idea. Identify what your um, what um identify what that idea can um, can do how identify the problems that the idea can solve you know put an action plan together be clear about your idea and then um, you know just um, go out there and achieve your your goals and also make sure that your goals are attainable they're not just aspirational you know so try to have a short-term plan and a long-term plan as well if not you would just run wild and things might not fall into place Amazing. So I think that brings us quite nicely to the end of the session. Princess Ronka, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your experiences um, with us today. There's, there are so many lessons and you know, so much to take away from your incredible story. So um, in, the, in the previous masterclasses, I had like a sort of um, generic ending that I would read. But given that this is the last one, I don't think it applies anymore. So um, I'll just say thank you to everybody for supporting Africa Fashion Week London's Masterclass series. Thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for watching, um, you know, if you watched any of the previous ones as well. Do stay tuned uh, on Instagram, uh, AFW London, um, on the website, AfricaFashionWeekLondonUK.com, just to keep up to date with what's happening. Um, we do have one last question, if you're okay taking it. Okay, I am. <laughs> um, how do you work with Black media to ensure the continued support of brands and AFWL at large? Oh, we, we have so many amazing um, media partners and also Black media houses as well. Um, and every year we have about 100 who attend Africa Fashion Week London every year. So we reach out to them and they give us their support as well. Because without them, um, you know, like I said, if you want to, if you want to go far, you must go with people. Yes. So, and that's one way we're able to like um, widen the reach, expand the reach of Africa Fashion Week London to enable us to support our designers. Amazing. Uh, do you have any final words that you would like to share in closing, just as we sign off? Um, I'll just, I'll just like to say thank you to everyone who's been listening to me. Thank you for taking your time out, and please um, keep safe and um, stay inspired. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eniafe. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, again, for being here, for everyone on the Zoom, watching on Facebook. Don't forget to follow AFW London on Instagram. You can find me at Eniafe Mamodu if you'd like to see more of this face. And hopefully we will have many more occasions like this to come together and have, you know, these really important conversations. So thank you, everybody, once again, and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye.